Good afternoon, boys and girls. Happy Good Friday. You know, one of the hardest things about being human is dealing with something called loneliness. Have you ever been lonely before? Raise your hand if you've ever been lonely. It's that really sad feeling, isn't it? That feeling that, you know, no one wants to play with you or the feeling that no one wants to talk to you or sit next to you. It's a really terrible feeling, isn't it? Agree with me? Yes? Yes. But you know, um, according to the U.S. Uh, Surgeon General or our nation's doctor, you know, they, uh, the doctor says that we came out of uh, the pandemic, but now we're dealing with another so-called disease epidemic, and it's called loneliness. He said that before the pandemic, half of the adults, U.S. adults, have ex said that they have experienced loneliness. And he even warns that loneliness can increase the adults, we're talking about adults here, the risk of heart disease 29%. Also, increases the risk of stroke 32%, and also increases the risk of dementia for older adults. So in so many words, is loneliness good for us? Is it good? No, right? We all agree it's not something good. A psychiatrist named Dr. Daniel Amen, he said, so I've been a psychiatrist for 40 years. I have seen increasing levels of loneliness and isolation happening ever since about 2007 with smartphones. Even children get locked into them, which disconnects them from other people. It's happening to older people as well. So what is he saying? He's saying that sometimes this thing replaces us from playing with each other or talking to each other, or hanging out, or doing some fun things together. We spend so much time doing this, and this is not enough. We need human contact. We need time with people. We need meaningful relationships. That's how God made us. Remember what God said when he saw, when, when he created Adam? God saw that it was not good for Adam to be alone, and he said, I will make him a helper. And who did God create? Eve, that's right. And so for Adam to thrive, he needed Eve. So in the same way, you and I, you and I need contact, meaningful relationships. We need time to laugh together. We need time to play together. We need time to talk. We need time to develop a relationship together. And when we don't have that relationship with God or with people, we begin to malfunction. Uh, this is what neuroscientists say. Someone, you know what a neuroscientist is? Neuro brain, right? A brain scientist. This is what they said. Now, when we are with people, when we are with our friends or family, we feel very secure. You know, no, nothing. Or, or, or we're relaxed, everything's good. But then, when loneliness kicks in, when we feel sad and alone, like nobody wants to play with us, or we feel like no one understands us, then suddenly the brain says, danger, danger, danger. And, and our body releases this hormone called, called a stress hormone called the fight and flight stress hormone. You know how it is when you're really mad or you're ready to get into a fight or you're really scared? What happens? Your heart rate goes up, right? Right? Your heart rate goes really, and then you, you just have this feeling either you're really hot or you're really cold. You, you know, you, your stress hormone starts to kick in, and then your blood pressure rises, your blood sugar rises, and then your body produce it, produces extra inflammatory cells to repair the damaged tissue and prevent infection. So your body is creating all these inflammatory cells, and yet it spends so much energy doing this, it forgets to make antibodies to fight viruses. So in so many words, what is Pastor Lenny saying? When you are alone a lot, when you're feeling lonely, 
you are in a situation that you can pick up a virus very easy. And so it's not good for us, correct? To be alone, correct? You agree? Here's the good news. Jesus came to take away all of our loneliness. So we just heard that our teachers read, they just read to us that Jesus went to the cross at 9 a.m. He was crucified. And then we know he died at 3 p.m. But you know what? About noontime, he said something very powerful. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. What did he say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What does the word forsaken mean? Does anybody know that? What does the word forsaken mean? What if someone says you're forsaken? What does that mean? Nobody? Catherine? Yes. What? Does it mean forgive? It sounds like it, but it's not. All right, over there. Abandoned. Alone. Jesus was left alone. Why? He was left alone on the cross. And you know what? Every time we look at the Bible, and remember when Jesus taught us how to pray, how did he teach us? Our Father. He always talked to God as his Father, but only here he says, My God. That's not very close, right? My God. My God, why have you forsaken me? Why was he left all alone? Why did God leave him when he was in so much pain? Why did God leave him? Here's an explanation from Martin Luther. <clears throat> Next slide. All the prophets foresaw that on the cross, Jesus became the greatest murderer adulterer, thief, rebel, blasphemer, and that there ever was. Our most merciful father sent his only son into the world and said to him, Jesus, you become Peter, the denier. You become Paul, the persecutor, the blasphemer, and cruel oppressor. You become David, the adulterer. You become Adam, that sinner. Jesus became you, and you became Jesus. Do you know what happened on the cross? Jesus became you. I have a really short video to show you. Maybe this will help. The people around Jesus just saw a man dying on a cross. And that's not what God saw. God saw something very different happening. God saw his son the Son of God, on a cross. Then he saw the stain of our sin appearing on Jesus. Your sin, my sin, everything selfish and mean we've ever done or ever could do. The stain of all that sin was appearing on Jesus, even though he never did anything wrong at all. God saw his Son stained with all the sin of the world. He saw him buried under all that sin. He saw him die under all that sin. What? Okay. So what happened here? Why did God leave him alone? Why did God not look at Jesus? Because he became sin. He took all of our sins. And when God looked at him, oh, you are gross. All the stuff that you've done wrong and I've done wrong, all the lies, all the cheating, all the hurting other people, all the stuff the adults do wrong, everything was thrown on Jesus. And when God looked at him, God said, yuck, you are disgusting. That's why Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Next slide. But here's the good news. People. Next slide. All right. Let's read this together. In First, Second Corinthians five twenty one, God made him who had no sin to be sin, so that in him 
you might become the righteousness of God. What does that mean? The good news is Jesus switched places with you. Sinners, me, you, we're sinners. We should die on a cross. But Jesus switched places with us and Jesus said, I will become you. I will take your sins and die on a cross for you and you could become righteous. You can be without sin because I am without sin. Isn't that good news? Now you know why Jesus was forsaken on the cross? Because he took our sins. Next slide. I love this verse here. It's another verse. Right, let's read it with me. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. You know the Bible says do not fear more than 300 times. God tells us do not fear. But he also tells us why. For I have redeemed you. That means I have saved you. Jesus died on the cross for you. You belong to me. Next, next slide. Read this with me. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. Well, first of all, God never promises us that life would be easy. He uses the imagery of water, floods. That's just an image to tell us that when we live on earth, there's difficulties. You agree with me? You ever been through some difficulties? Yeah? Yeah, I, you know, my dog just went to heaven in January, so, you know, that was sad. You know, we all go through difficult times, right? God says there's going to be rivers. Sometimes there's going to be fires. But what's his promise? I will be with you. You will never be alone. Jesus was forsaken, so you never will be forsaken. He says, I will be with you. You're going to pass through the waters. You're going to be okay. You're going to pass through fire, and you're going to be okay. It might not be easy, but God says, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Why? Because Jesus was forsaken for who? For us, for you. You would never be forsaken. Let me bring this to a close here. One time there were, t there were twins um, that, were, that was born, and they were born 12 weeks premature. So oftentimes when a baby is born too early, they're born, you know, their weight is very, they're really light. For example, when my daughter, my daughter was born five weeks early, well, these twins were born 12 weeks early, and they only weighed th uh, two pounds, two pounds, maybe the size of my hand, two pounds. Well, they're twins, and so the nurses put them on different beds and try to, you know, the inc incubator to keep them warm. But the younger one, who was three ounces lighter, was starting to fade. She wasn't doing well. For some reason, they noticed that her heart rate was really high. Usually what happens when uh, our heart rate gets as high is because what, we're stressed, right? They noticed the baby was stressed. And they also noticed that she's not doing well. There's nothing we can do to help her. And so they, they were thinking and praying, what, what do we do? How do we help her? Well, remember... Remember what, we, what I just said? What happens when we're lonely? Is it good? She probably felt lonely. You know, what's the solution? One of the nurses remembered when she was a nurse in a, a different country, and they didn't have all that technology. And she remembered reading literature that all she needed to do was put the baby next to her sister. And that's what they did. They placed the younger one next to her bigger sister. And right away, she started to relax. She started to recover because she knew where she belonged. She was no longer alone. She was with her sister. So my dear friends in Christ, the message I want you to take home today is you are never alone. Because who's with us? God is always with us. 
even when you feel sad, even when you feel all alone, he will never leave you. He says, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you, because Jesus was forsaken for you on that cross. May God bless you today. Amen. We continue with, uh, next slide, please. Please stand. We continue with prayer. Next slide. Together we pray. Dear God, we remember today the pain and suffering of the cross and all that Jesus was willing to endure so we could be set free. He paid the price such a great sacrifice to offer us the gift of eternal life. Help us never to take for granted this huge gift of love on our behalf. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it all. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.